Welcome, bike. And the NFL has pulled the scummiest of scummy moves to kick this episode off. We'll discuss how they gave uh, Deshaun Watson a finalized 11-game suspension. That also lands 12 weeks into the season because they have their bye in week nine. Guess who they're playing oh, yeah, yeah. in week 12? I'm a guess. I was going to uh, say it's scummy, 12? but not for the reason you might think. And then I was going to go into that. What's your question about week 12? Well, they're, I don't know who they're playing week 12, but I know who they're playing week 13. Who are they playing in week 12 and 13? <laughs> God damn it, week 13, they're playing the Texans. Yes. Yes. Somebody just get it out. That's what I mean. There's a bye in week nine, which means 11 games plus the bye would be week 13. Great catch, sexual. You're already big brain in today. Love to see it. Week 13, they're playing at Houston. I'll tell you what. I'm scouring StubHub right now. I want to grab a couple tickets. Want to go? No, I don't want to go. Oh. I just want to grab them so that when the game rolls resell. around, resell the sheesh out of them right now. So uh, Deshaun Watson is going to be on the field for the last five, six weeks of the season. Their schedule as it lands starting in week 13 at Houston, at Cincinnati, home versus Baltimore, home versus the Saints, at Washington, at Pittsburgh. That's a lot of tough defenses. That's a really fucking tough slate outside of the, uh, outside of the Texans. So... Yeah. We can break it down from a fantasy perspective. I took Watson in the Scott Fish Bowl in like the fifth, the end of the fifth round. It's a super flex league, obviously. The eleven games doesn't make him feel good. Yeah. No, he's strictly a dynasty play at this point. Like, yeah, sure. You, no, you draft you can, him in redraft. I'm not drafting so? him. No, I wouldn't. I'm not holding him on my roster for eleven weeks. I probably wouldn't either. In a super flex league, you don't want Deshaun Watson for the end of the year. I no. do, but I don't want to hold him for eleven weeks. Like, I'd rather I'd be I'd be fine having like a Jared Goff or someone like even a Baker Mayfield. You know, just sitting on my bench all year instead of Deshaun Watson. Like, cause I can, I can at least start them if I have to. I mean, sure I'm not, not grabbing them in like team. round ten. Well, that, so how well, far does he you fall? Think you're you guys are literally just saying that you're not drafting him. Yeah, yeah. What well, round do you think you're grabbing him in? Don't fucking cite today's ADP because that's not the same as what it would be. Well, that's what I'm saying. But I would take all 32 other quarterbacks above him. I would not. I would take Maybe him not over like Kenny Pickett. Pickett. Would take him over Bisky. Drew Lock. I would take him over. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, fair. Those I would guys take probably thirty over him. Drafted anyway. And twelve team super flex, they will be. Yeah, sure, but I'm not going to be drafting them because I'm going to take my quarterback early. Watson will probably fall to like round 13, 14, 15. He hasn't played a game of football in two years. I don't give a fuck. And he's got a ridiculously difficult schedule. Bro, he can just be a top eight quarterback for the last six weeks of the season, and it's worth a 13, 14th round pick. He also looked ass in his first preseason game. Not that I'm putting too much weight into it, but there could just be some rust yeah. on Deshaun Watson. It's been a long time. Yeah, I'm sure there will be, but I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm drafting Deshaun Watson late in drafts if, if, he's, if he's sitting there. If I have to get him in round nine or ten, which is insane, and some idiot wants to do that, I'll let him do it. But if I have him for five, six games going into the, the championship weekend, like I'm Would you I'm take him or Mariota? Him. Him or Goff? Uh, We're Goff it, guys. What do you mean? Here's the thing. It's going to do I already have a quarterback too, or am I taking Goff as my Am I taking these guys as my QB3? Yes. I'll probably take Watson. I'll take Watson Yuck. almost any QB3 that's like the bottom five or seven guys. If it's like I'm at the end of the draft and I'm deciding between Goff and Watson, but I haven't picked a quarterback too, obviously I'm not taking Watson because I need a quarterback too. But if it's him or some fucking schlub that might fill in for one bye week throughout the year, I'm taking Watson. What about Winston? I would say I'm I'm kind of high on Winston. I think Winston's going to be a nice player this year statistically. So I, I would like take Winston over Watson. Yeah, me too. It's a, it's it's a sus all around game. Though. Eleven. It yeah. feels like the NFL did this intentionally, bro. Yeah, there's definitely. no fucking reason that they can come out with saying that they didn't. It's like all the money they fucking lost from weeks one to eleven not having Watson is just made back in this one yeah, single yeah. game. I've never heard of an eleven game suspension. Yeah. So and odd. then they're like, we're going to throw you into this gauntlet as an extended punishment it's honestly they probably just saw like texans oh that week yeah that's it didn't it. matter could have been week 17 and they were <laughs> yeah. like you're getting a 16 game <laughs> yeah. suspension come back for week 17 exactly damn um okay so you guys don't want him i mean this goes without saying but yeah one quarterback leagues obviously you're gonna let that man yeah, fly. Like 14th round he's sitting there yeah i'll probably take him but does like, it does it make the appeal for guys him. like amari cooper i mean you were drafting the other guys regardless like chubb was getting drafted obviously like early third back and second cooper was like borderline fifth sixth round pick now like I'd be i think more this gives them a little bit of a bump guys. yeah like what at, like I mean, they don't so, creep yeah. up in their adp those are the guys like i already like amari cooper i think he's going at a good value i think he still has a lot of potential he's a good receiver now i'm gonna get like in my championship push deshaun washington could be coming to town to, to be his quarterback i mean that could be that could be really uh, yeah. i mean that could be the boost that you need to to take your team to that championship level. It's a little bit of a tiebreaker for me. I'm not going to put a lot of weight into it because a lot of things can happen between now and then. I'm going to wait hard. 
but I think uh, when I'm deciding between like Amari Cooper and uh, you know DJ Chark or something like that. Honestly, behind <laughs> Cooper though, <laughs> behind Cooper, like in this Cleveland offense, I don't really want anyone else. No. Like even if Deshaun Watson's coming back late in the season, it's would, not worth. What would be though. interesting is like if David Bell starts emerging like week yeah. eight, ten, or something like that. Watson gets back. Just week thirteen. We just ignoring Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah, yeah, we are exactly. I mean, yeah. Unfortunately. His actions like warrant ign- ign- ignoration. Yeah, he's a very much so an animal guy. I just feel like he's got a shot. But here's the thing with Jones: like he, it almost feels like Jones is not going to do anything with Jacoby Brissett. I so, agree. Yeah, so, so it's a so Watson did, play, right? Like so did, at the end of the year, keep your eye out. Maybe okay. you can pick okay. up. That's a, that's a fair. You know, that's a fair assessment. Jones. David but Njoku like, was a sorry, not to cut you off, but David Njoku was a sleeper that I really liked. I think I'm I'm off of him. I now. don't think Deshaun ever really even threw to his tight ends that much. I mean, did he have? A David and Joku level. Yeah, are you like, like? Are you? That's a chicken or the egg argument. It always feels yeah, like the of quarterbacks. Course. That's half of football. It's like Rodgers doesn't throw to tight ends, but then when he has a tight end, he kind of did. You know, it's like Jermichael Finley, all that bullshit. So I think if, if you're a good player on the field and your only other fucking passing option is Amari Cooper, you're probably going to go to uh, Joku. I feel like we also have to consider how big of a bench you have. Like you're not going to want to hold on to these guys for 11 weeks to just hope that they're good with Deshaun Watson. Yeah. If you have like a five person bench. Well, the only, I think the only guys in this offense being drafted for fantasy are Chubb and that's uh, it. Hunt, <laughs> Chubb, period. Hunt, and Cooper. Yeah. So you're not, I mean, you're not waiting for Watson to come back. You're drafting them with the idea that you're just playing them in your lineups immediately because they're going to have like the target funnel in that offense is going to be really fucking consolidated. All right. So Watson, uh, great early round pick if we get to the conclusion of this. Now we're going to talk about the Sleeper Bowl. So earlier this week on Tuesday night, we hosted the Sleeper Bowl in that room out there, and we had a bunch of cool-ass people join us for the stream. It was a 14-team league, 16 rounds, one quarterback league. The entire draft party stream is live on our YouTube now, so you can go rewatch the the replay if you want to go check it out. We had A.J. Dillon on, we had Tyler Argier on, and then we had a bunch of fucking losers after that. But the first you know, 10, 15 minutes was fun. Basically, we're going to recap the draft, uh, our favorite parts of the draft, some different things that we saw that we thought were interesting throughout it, which came off like fucking immediately with Snapback Jack at the 102. So Pete was 101. Jack came in. And took Austin Eckler as the 102. Ridiculous. While Jonathan Taylor was still on the board. Yeah, I thought that was like the first ridiculous pick of the draft. I mean, how do we feel just about Jonathan Taylor not going at the 101? Like, I'm Taylor 101. Is, is sure. Taylor one? Like, are we all unanimous Taylor 101? I think I'd go McCaffrey, honestly. Well, you're an idiot. I, I wouldn't go McCaffrey, but I don't. I don't hate the pick. I don't hate it because I think like it's obviously it's a it's a risk reward upside yeah. play. Like he could be Christian McCaffrey of you know two years ago or whatever three. I don't remember the last time he was fucking on the field. And you know, and win you your league, sure. If you promised me 16 games from both guys, I would choose McCaffrey. Yeah. Nobody has anywhere close to as much upside as McCaffrey. Because of the receiving work, obviously. Yeah. 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 He's so, got like a 20-point floor even if he doesn't score a touchdown. How do we feel about McCaffrey with Baker now? Being the confirmed starter, even though we already knew he was going to be the starter, but it's confirmed Baker Mayfield. I kind of feel like McCaffrey's just that quarterback proof. Yeah. I do too, because it's not like he's like a deep threat where it's like he needed a fucking accurate quarterback to hit him. I, th- I mean, I think the offense probably runs a little bit smoother under Baker. I don't really think any anything outside of Christian McCaffrey is not what makes Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Know? So Christian McCaffrey 101, not egregious. Austin Eckler. Definitely not egregious. He's like the consensus 102, I feel like. There are a lot of people moving over to the C-Mac train now, but I'm still Taylor because it's like, yeah. you could tell me right now, Taylor is going to finish averaging two and a half points per game lower than McCaffrey. I might still take that because I just feel the injury risk. He's touched the ball 350 times for like five straight years and never gets injured. Yeah. I'm like, cool. Give me a high upside RB1 where I don't have to fucking worry about an ankle sprain that's going to keep you out. But for also remember, that was McCaffrey. <laughs> remember McCaffrey the first three, four years of his career? Yeah. He was not. Do you he remember was McCaffrey the last two years of his career? Yeah. I'm Jonathan, saying that these could things to start Jonathan to add Taylor. up. There's like scar tissue yeah. that builds up. Sure. But Jonathan Taylor is McCaffrey. Is that a Jesus fucking train? Christ. We got a we got a train come down. The middle <laughs> yeah. of what Manhattan. the hell is that? Jonathan Jonathan Taylor is McCaffrey, but just healthier. Yeah, he's not going to get the pass catching work, but I just I, I think it's just like a great offense. He he whips out those fucking huge plays every now and then. Like you're not going to be upset by drafting Jonathan Taylor. Maybe you miss out on the C Mac twenty five points per game. I think we'll I think you'll be all right with JT. I just feel way safer. I'm like give me him at the one hundred and one, and I'll enjoy the rest of my fucking draft. I feel like with C Mac, you're just waiting for something to happen to him. That's fair. You know, it's, just, it's a peace of mind thing at this point. Just, I don't know if I want to see him there. Uh, Eckler at the 102 just felt, I don't know. I'd rather have the wide receivers that I feel safer with. I, I would rather have Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry. Like, if we're going to take a running back to the 102 and you're not going to take Jonathan Taylor, I don't think Austin Eckler is the guy I would be jumping to. It probably would have been Derrick Henry. I would even throw Dalvin Cook in there. I would even throw Dalvin Cook in there. I would even throw 
Like, I would rather have... See, but you talk about the injuries yeah. with McCaffrey, but then you're saying you want to take Henry and Cook. Henry, those, guys, those guys get injured Cook, all the time. Just had Henry a, gets injured all the time. He got injured one time last year. Yeah. Right? And Cook, he's 29 years old. Did play, one how many, time he got injured. No, no, no. no, 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 I'm just, I, no, no, no he's no, coming no. at my guy yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> my problem, like, yeah, he had an injury last year, and, yeah, it hurt his performance for sure. He's healthy now. That's football. He doesn't have like a, you can say the same thing. Yeah, but he has an injury history, and he's small. Derrick Henry doesn't really have an injury history. He had some ankle, you know, whatever here and there. But he's huge and strong. Like, there's a difference. Everybody gets injured. doesn't matter how big you are. I agree. c got injured like nine times in the last two I years. I agree. Though. But the, if you're going to look at the two of them and say, Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, who's more likely to get injured? Are you taking probably, Henry over C-Mac? Probably year? not, no, just because of the passing work. Yeah. With that uh, potential that Christian McCaffrey has. Yeah. Also, we're comparing but, him to Austin Eckler, aren't we? Yeah. Like, we're not comparing them to C. We're all yeah, saying no, C. We're, we're all over the, the place. Those two are in their own tier, no matter right. what you want yeah. to do, Taylor tier, C Mac tier, or vice versa. But yeah, everyone after that is like up for debate. I have Cook as the RB3 as well. I think, I mean, he has as much of a, an upside shot to hit like C Mac numbers as anybody else in, in fantasy. And I think this Vikings offense is actually going to be super good this yeah. year. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they put out. Eckler, uh, I will say the one thing that makes me a little bit higher on Eckler as opposed to like maybe a month ago is that I was really set on the idea that Isaiah Spiller was going to be like the clear RB2 there and bring some electricity to this offense as a bigger back. But it doesn't feel like fucking anybody back there is winning the, the RB2 role right now. And it's just going to be like, all right, Austin Eckler, here's fucking 20 touches again. Like when you're tired, let us know. We'll fucking throw one of these chumps out on the field. Yeah. Spiller came in after both Kelly and Roundtree. Yeah, it was bad. Preseason game last it was, week. It was real bad. I think Spiller will be ahead of those guys, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think the Chargers yeah. are just like, well, we missed again. Yeah. <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah. All right, Eckler, run it back. Yeah. So I'm I'm okay with Eckler. I just I, there's no fucking chance I use my like second second pick yeah. overall on him. Jefferson and Cup over Eckler every day of the week. Um, I don't think so. No. No. You take, Always running back. No. Yeah. Just from positional value. The upside of both Jefferson and Cup this year, though, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but that's not what I'm what I'm going for. I mean, I I. I feel very confident I can piece together wide receiver core after like round five where we get into that dead zone running backs that, that we talked about last week. Like I want none of those guys. But you can still take a running back round two, round three, get like Fournette and I yeah. don't know who else. But uh, what I'm saying is like every single round, it feels like there's a receiver there I can take that falls off a cliff for running backs. Like I'm same reason why people take quarterbacks early because you need two of them. There's just not a lot there. And it's just like, I'm, I need to assure myself that I'm going to have that position locked up. It was crazy how quickly like good fantasy players just ripped off the board in this one by the time yeah. we were in like round seven we were struggling to like pick a good football player it was I 14 mean, that's, teams that's and it's one quarterback so people aren't like you know yeah that was the first time really. i played in a one qb league in quite a fucking while uh, yeah we should that was probably i think our biggest mistake of the whole draft i know you still like having kyler we didn't get there yet but i think I we should have we're not gonna regret, quarterback we're not gonna regret having him yeah, i think one. we should have punted quarterbacks hard dude you guys I wanted hunter renfro He's going to put up like eight points a game and be the absolute non-difference maker. We'll get to that point. But yeah. our first yeah, pick, yeah. 113 overall. We took Kamara here. I mean, Schefter's saying Kamara's not going to be suspended. Tomorrow there might be a fucking report. Tomorrow there's going to be a video. Yeah, so. Uh, Honestly, if you told me Kamara was playing 16 games, I would actually throw him probably behind Dalvin Cook, close, like neck and neck with Austin Eckler. Yeah, he's probably in that tier. That's why I think we I think we got an Austin Eckler type player down at the 113. I, I, I think... We wanted DeAndre's. It, I mean, Cook and Swift both went off the board. The we wanted Swift us. for sure. If Cook was there, I would have taken Cook. Yeah, but, but if, I didn't think if he, he was wasn't. Swift it. was there. We would. I was surprised Scooter Doodle didn't take uh, Cook. She went with Devonte Adams. Yeah. Which, not that it's it's early, but I feel like uh, I'm still. I love Devonte, but I'd rather have like you know a top tier running back over. That's crazy to me that Cook Devontae fell to right one eleven yeah. in the one quarterback league. That was wild. Um, our strategy we were talking about beforehand, we were like, all right, we definitely need to secure one top end running back, and then we can kind of split the difference. I w we were thinking, we did some mocks, and like we were hoping Stefan Diggs fell to us yeah. at the fucking 2 2. Receivers went. He went off at the 108. So we were sitting there at the 2 2, which is the uh, 16th pick overall. And it was between Saquon and CD Lamb. And we were just like, fuck it, the running backs again. Like they've, these guys have been saying basically the whole episode is just, we're not going to get running backs later on in the draft. So uh, we decided to go with Saquon, and then. And things got a little bit questionable <laughs> after that. Let's talk about some of the uh, the NFL players because that was our first time kind of hanging out with any dudes like that are you know not in the fantasy industry. AJ Dillon was cool as shit. Yeah, he was. yeah, seemed like a real nice dude, uh, down to earth. You know, cool guy. Uh, I think it's awesome that he's got he's getting into fantasy football. It's only like his second year, really. So the champ is here. <laughs> the champ is here. This guy comes in having never played fantasy football before and wipes the floor with 
12, 13 other analysts. What did you learn from one year to the next uh, in terms of like fantasy football? Because I feel like I've played for so long and year over year, sometimes I get worse. You know, it's like the harder I try, the worse I get. You got any tips for us? Yeah, you uh, you just can't count yourself out too early. You know, uh, really just got to get to that playoff push. And then I uh, hope you guys pan out at the end. Uh, I had uh, Amonra St. Brown uh, played like a beast, especially later on, uh, oh later on in the year. So believe in those rookies, man. They'll, they'll come around. Yeah, last year was his first year. He played in one league. It was a sleeper bowl, and he won the fucking league, which kind of just goes to show you how ridiculous this game is. Yeah, so that's why, like, when all you come at me, you like, you've been playing fantasy for 15 years. It doesn't matter, guys. It's half of its luck anyway, <laughs> so don't come at me. Yeah, this game's not like wine. You get you get worse as the years go on. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you don't, just get you get too much in your head. You know, it, it, you're better just being ignorant and it, that that shit is bliss. You don't know anything. Yeah, you're just going in. I'm with getting drunk at every draft from now on. Right, just winging it. No strategy. No just strategy is the best way. strategy. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, snacks won the E-Town get down two years ago. He, that's getting that's drunk. the thing. Okay, so snacks on the E-Town get down two years ago, being absolutely blacked out while drafting. Look at these steals. Look at these steals. Steals. What you did here was you skip three rounds of the draft so you could take the Giants defense <laughs> at the end. Yeah. I threw everybody off. Yeah, we were Yeah, no idea. I was throwing off. Come here, Steve. Let's fight. I'm pretty sure one chains has won two of the last three years. He can't pronounce half the players that he yeah. fucking picks. Josh Jank Josh Jankubs. It's actually out of control. Yeah. AJ Dillon went in not knowing how to play fantasy football, drafted a team, and then won. So, you know. Fancy's a lie. Yeah, he got he got better though. I feel like his team's. Uh, I was just gonna say, I'm looking at his team. He's it got looks a solid like he team. Actually, knows what he's doing. Cool. Um, we sniped him on him on himself. Is that how we would say that? So at the four two, we were sitting there. Yeah, we went Kamara Barkley. We got uh, Terry. I'm low key excited having Terry at the three thirteen there. That was our wide receiver one. I don't like. I don't hate Terry. I hate Lockett. So at the Dylan spot, we were at the four two. That was a big mistake. I think Dylan. Yeah, we're jumping all over. The, oh, okay. You're you're talking about Dylan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Never at mind. the four two. We had a choice. We had a choice to pick a good fantasy team or have fun. We chose the latter. <laughs> That's we, so not true. We made we made the true. good pick here. I agree. No. So we were at the four yes. two. Well, here's the thing. Like Waddle just seems like a guy who jumps at, off the screen when he's like the bottom of the tier of like those next wide receivers that you probably want to draft there. And then we would have been able to like kind of just be a lot more flexible when the draft got a little bit lower down to like the seventh, eighth round rather than having to hammer wide receiver after wide receiver after wide receiver. That was my only kind of complaint with you're the acting Dylan like pick. we can't put AJ Dillon in our starting lineup. We can, but look at the wide receivers on this team. They're Bro, horrendous. We, it's that's, atrocious. But we have three killer running backs. We <laughs> no, have Dylan, three running is backs. Is Dillon even a killer running back? Let's if Aaron Jones How doesn't many touchdowns is he scoring? If Aaron year? Jones doesn't get hurt, how big of a difference do you think Dylan and say Miles Sanders have in fantasy points this season? Huge. You think so? Yes. Oh, take Miles Dylan. Sanders' floor is like yeah. down to Earth's core. The floors are the same. Dylan's got way higher no, touchdown no, upside. That's not true. I don't think way like way tire, way more touchdown. Touch if you told me Sanders was just not even a factor on that offense anymore, is that that surprising? Yeah, like, there's no run. I the running so. backs on the Eagles are they're non-existent now because Jalen Hurts takes most of the carries. A Rod did come out yesterday, and he was like, "We need to put our best eleven players out on the field, and our two starting running backs are part of those." Best eleven. Yeah, it's not gonna, any, he, he's going to get work. He's oh, he's going to get a ton of work. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder how high Aaron Jones's slot rate is going to be. I think it might be like fucking weirdly high, forty percent now, forty five percent. Yeah, I think I they're going to use him as like a fucking wide receiver. I think the only way that Dylan pick pays off is if Aaron Jones gets hurt. Otherwise, no. we're going to see so he's many gonna guys. He's going to get twelve to fourteen him. carries or touches a game. Yeah, that's, and, that's just the low floor. And maybe a floor. touchdown a game. That's fine. Eight nine fantasy points. For fourth round pick, yeah, I said twelve touches. I didn't say how many yards. Could be twelve fucking touches for seventy yards and a tud. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like too upset He's about the Dylan pick. It was definitely earlier than you know than he probably would have gone. But he would have. He would have gone in like the next five or six picks. It was just that I middle would, run of wide receivers right there of Waddle, Judy. Yeah, it's not Hollywood, that there's a Bateman, a running really back. I wish we took over him. It's the, uh, there's wide receivers there. I think we could have gone with. As far as running backs, like you look who went next. It was Dobbins and Mitchell. Like I'd probably rather have Dylan yeah. easily. So, like, when, yeah, we when compare it that way. But, I mean, also, yeah, we didn't know in the future, but we could have had the, you know, Hollywood Brown, uh, Kyler Murray stack. You know, we could have probably. Do we want Waddle in our wide, rete- wide receiver two spot and then our flex being, like, I guess Michael Carter? Well, here's the thing. Or like, Kadarius Tony as the wide receiver if three. If we took Waddle instead of Dylan, you didn't have to take Lockett there at the seventh round pick. You could have taken, I don't know. We could have taken, like, Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny. Or, or it could have been, like, Pierce Sanders in the flex or something before. like that. 
But like, I just like that so much more. So you you like Waddle and Penny or Dylan and Lockett? Waddle and Penny. I sorry. like Waddle and Penny more too. I don't know. I, mean, I don't we, think the Dylan pick was bad. I just looking back on it now, it would have just made us a lot more flexible drafting wise. Because yes. once we got to Lockett, we were like, we're this is a start three wide receiver team, and now our next eight picks, we need to draft like four or five wide receivers in a row, even though there's no value there to be had. They kind of stink. We honestly probably should have taken Sky Moore over Tyler Lockett. I okay, that I think it got that's tough the on thing. the board. It got tough on the board. I think we that's were. the thing that I dislike about it most. It's not necessarily having to take a wide receiver there. I think it's the one we took. I'm just really off of they Seattle. They just went really general. fast. They went so fast, and we were on the clock there, and Sleeper's ADP is, like, a little bit wacky. So you just look. We're, like, trying to host this thing, asking people who are on live who have been waiting for 10 minutes fucking questions, and we don't want to make them feel, like, weird. So we're like, yo, what's going on? And then we're like, oh, fuck, we have 12 seconds on the clock. Mm-hmm. Let's see who's at the top of the board. It was like Lockett, and you wanted Claypool, which I, I was like, there's no – I would rather take Lockett than Claypool at this point. But – I would have wanted Garrett Wilson, I think. Dude, then Jets are – I don't I don't. Garrett I don't know. Wilson, Joe Flacco? Nice stack. <laughs> So we could have got Flacco late. <laughs> Take Being him to the two. Late. Yeah, looking back now, I kind of wish uh, I wish we went the wide receiver early and then take in Penny instead of Lockett yeah. there. Or That's some kind of like move agree. around there. No chance. Also, I probably would have considered taking Amari Cooper <laughs> over Dalton Schultz. Yeah, we did consider that pretty heavily. I think um, that would just make the wide receiver room so much better. Yeah. And then instead of, I don't know, one of those later round guys take some random tight end. Say fuck yeah. tight end. Ertz fell like two rounds later. Actually, no, we wouldn't have been able to get Ertz, but I, I get what you're saying. I kind of feel good about having Schultz. I feel like, you know, I love Schultz. Yeah, even though we have like a weak wide receiver room, I think the most wide, of our team is well rounded. Wide receiver is the easiest position to replace during the season, too. Yeah, also that. Will it be, though, with how deep this league is? Well, it, it's Draft deep, 224 it's, it's, it's players. the same thing. What you're going to, because it's 14 teams, it's going to be easier to find a running back. Now? I think the point like, is like everybody's wide receiver three is going to be scoring them like eight to nine points. So that's something we could probably find on the wire. Yeah. I mean, I, f- I feel fine. How many flex spots we start Two or one? One. One. Oh, just one. Okay. That's not bad then. Three wide receivers, one flex spot. Yeah. yeah I mean, AJ the, Dillon rocking the flex. That's what, beautiful. Yeah. The wide receiver is going to be fucking ugly. Imagine his quads just flexing in our fucking lineup. We need Tony to play. We need Tony to play fucking just get on the field. Sir, get yeah. in the ice bath, get some therapy. According to Dr. Morris, get some fucking bone marrow injection. Let's get rolling. And then we, should we move on to like probably the most controversial pick of our draft in the sixth round? I don't even think it's the most controversial. Of our draft. We were split. We oh, were we were not split. We were not split at all. You guys just wanted Hunter. All right, everybody look at the board right now. This is a one quarterback league. We're sitting there in the sixth round. Kyler, for me, is the, dro- is, is the last guy in the elite tier there. And, yeah, we could have waited on quarterback. But Kyler, to me, is someone who could rip off a QB1 overall season. The last, like, two years, he's been on pace to do that first half of the season before D-Hop getting hurt or him getting hurt, whatever the case may be. It was between Kyler Murray and Hunter Renfro. And you guys dictated Hunter Renfro. And I was like, okay, no. And I just drafted Kyler Murray. And I, there's just no way I would have let that happen. Renfro's yeah. a guy that, with Devontae Adams in there, gets you fucking eight fantasy points a game. Tops. I'm with Nick. I think the difference between Kyler Murray and, say, like a Derek Carr, it's going to be five to seven fantasy points per game. Yeah. And that is a much bigger difference than you're going to get from having what about a Renfro instead of Tyler Lockett. What about a Kyler and a Dak? Because Dak went two rounds later. I, I feel like there's not that much of a difference. I think, I think there will be. The rushing floor? We got no stacks. We don't have any stacks, which I don't necessarily like but that i feel like that's gonna have the dax schultz stack we could like there's a lot of stacks that we missed out on obviously like i said like you know we weren't paying attention half the time uh, i didn't even know who was on our team i think dak will be kind of replaceable though with like i think our best pick leaving. is fucking henderson in the 10th i really like that pick too. <laughs> like, i love that pick we got so that. much yeah henderson at the 10-2 was good everything else might have followed up with the worst one Michael hardman <laughs> yeah one. right after that so with the fucking that was one Miami. where like the time just went out and we just like had to fucking click something uh, van jefferson's growing on me I was looking into his injury a little bit. It doesn't seem that serious. It was a minor procedure. There's a chance he'll be back for week one. I think the chance is actually more likely that he will be. We don't even need him week one, so. That's what I'm saying. But I also think, like, if, if Van Jefferson was healthy, we knew that, it would, <laughs> no, you don't, there's no. Uh, there's sound no, like me last year. I was a big Van Jefferson Yeah, guy. Van Jefferson's not like, if he plays the full 16, it's going to be a problem. Like, he's, he's just. I'm just saying the wide receiver three, the yeah. third target. Like, I don't even, th- I think he's probably above Higby. I don't think so. Like, I feel like he wasn't last year and he had every opportunity to be the wide receiver three. I feel like I remember Van Jefferson being kind of sneaky good. Maybe. Let me check this out. I think he had a couple games where he just had, like, a deep bomb that he caught for a touchdown. But that's, like, 
that's the shitty part about him is like you never know when that's we're not happen. starting him every week so yeah. we need to be able to fucking identify <laughs> the weeks where he's just gonna catch a hell mary yeah higby out, out targeted him played two less oh no he had four less targets but played in two less games so when he's on the field he's a little more targeted and then once obj stepped on the field van jefferson took a back seat again it just feels like they don't really have like they drafted him and they liked him as a player they just keep bringing in people to take yeah. his spot exactly <laughs> yeah and odell is still a free agent he might still go back there no odell's not playing until like week 14 I don't think the so. earliest no super bowl acl tear Super Bowl ACL. I I forgot who I was talking to. Too. One of the doctors was like, "This is the same ACL again, and this the time frame bumps back three months." Now that I it's realize the you could tear it. the same ACL twice. It was some bullshit. Yeah. yeah, it was like it goes from nine to twelve to twelve to fifteen now, and that was Super Bowl, so it was like yeah, I guess borderline. Yeah, I mean yeah. we still have you know right after they got Tyquan Thornton, who I think is actually he's one of, he's one of my guys I'm looking for in, in uh, some of my other drafts. I think hints. he could be what we want Van Jefferson to be. Yeah. I, I love that he got drafted in the second round, went to the Patriots, all that. But I feel like since then, since draft day, I haven't heard anything about him. Scored a tug. We yeah, what do you mean? Season. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's a beast. Okay. He's a ball cool. player. I'm down. Like, what are like, you talking about, bro? He the could dude absolutely was, be dude was nothing. a freak athlete coming out of college. He could like, be complete like nothing. But for, like, you know, taking a guy in the 13th round, um, we needed a wide receiver. He's like, he's, it's, it's one of those upside guys, you know? Yeah. Noah Fant in the 14th was such, like, a... I don't hate that. You could be I, a, you I, get dude, a lot I of volume. great value, but like having Ugly. two Seattle pass catchers kills me. It's not great. No matter One what of them the value will be relevant. Is. Following up with Tua. <laughs> yeah, also, CK Metcalf. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of following, oh, following up Tua. with Tua. I love Tua this year. We should take Deshaun Watson here. Yeah. <laughs> Still available? Oh, he's not. No, he was. Oh, no, he wasn't. Never mind. He got picked like, before. At that point, like, we could have taken Mac Jones and just had, had like, one stack. And no. it's not even a good stack. Dude, Tua's upside yeah, is so stack. much higher than Mac. I think Tua's upside is uh, is pretty high. Kyler Murray high? Kyler Murray high. So. Yeah. What's funny is uh, we're going to have to drop a player for a kicker. And it's probably going to be a Mikkel Hardman. Yeah. No, no. He'll, he'll slide right into that IR. He's got that versatility now. Do we have IR spots open? We I have believe two. yes. So Trash. obviously we we just went through our whole team. We aren't super confident um, with it, right? No, I feel like I, this fucking sucks. All right, well, I was trying to have <laughs> trying to have a little nah, optimism. I, I do think if we hit on a decent wide receiver too, or one of these guys does well, the rest of our team again is well fucking. If rounded. Tony plays, I think like, we have you know, a good 15, foundation. If we can get like 13, 14 games out of Tony and AJ Dillon is like a solid RB two, I think we're we're looking pretty. Me too. Ray's team is. In my opinion, dynamite. And what do you yes. do? He went running back, running back, running back. Yes, he wasn't over here yes. crying about. Oh, my wide receiver. Ray core literally is be did the strategy Tony and I wanted to do. Okay, now Scott, here we are. My wide receiver 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 three. Three. Ray, uh, sick fucking team. You keep making up fake scenarios yeah. as if. Would you want to take D. Montgomery at three thirteen? We would have been better off taking Zeke at the fucking turn, like I wanted. <laughs> oh, no. So Zeke over Saquon. How how yes. does that change your team? It's still RB RB. And then we should have went RB RB RB. We should have took another. Who should we have taken at three thirteen? Who should we have taken at three thirteen? Zeke. He wasn't, he wasn't available, there. you fucking morons. <laughs> um, I'm saying, I don't know what he's saying, but what I'm saying <laughs> is... That you guys I are like, we should have went RBRB. We fucking did. No, no, no. no. Yeah, but but that, what I'm saying, what his problem with going with the RBs heavy is that, oh, our wide receiver core is weak. To, I would have went it wide receiver weak. over... I know that, but I would have went with another one over Schultz or yeah. Murray. My point is, is fucking Ray GQ did it right. He did it right because those guys fell to him. Yeah. It, had Zeke fell he to us at the, the three thirteen, we would have taken him over Terry. Obviously, I don't. I don't give a shit about Zeke. That's his problem. Sure. My, I, I'm, I'm agreeing I'm cool with you. With the running backs. I, I yeah, wasn't like. We're still looking like, and then he followed up with two wide receivers, then a quarterback, and his right. Team. Him so, sitting in that. I mean, dude, th those players were easy picks for him. Yeah. Where he was sitting, like those are all smash plays. We didn't have any of those great guys fall to us at the picks that we had. Otherwise, yeah, of course it would. It's been entirely based on draft slot. Hunter, like Ren God, would have been a smash play. No. Literally the third option, maybe fourth. In a really good, in a in phenomenal offense. Draft good players on good teams. That's why we Josh drafted Morris a bunch strategy. of Seahawks Arizona and Giants. was like first place last year. And Collier was a pretty good player. The Raiders are going to win like eight games this year probably. No, nah, that's going to be the Chiefs. Chiefs are going to be in fourth place in the AFC West. You know what the low-key part of that division that, well, first of all, the Raiders' O-line is terrible, and every team in that division has a sick pass rush. Sick yeah. pass rush. Derek Carr is going to live on the ground. He's strong. It's fine. <laughs> he could take it. What team I actually really like is Matthew Betts' team. That's you the team that everybody in the chat was loving. Yeah. Every time I looked at the it's chat, a, I saw pretty like good, pretty good squad. Guy, uh, he's, he's got I'm not in love with it. Honestly, backs. I I'm think not in love with it. I don't know if part. I like a single pick after round seven, though. Dude, you don't think don't so? that's, even, a, that's seven rounds is a lot, even, though. I yeah. was gonna go with that's fair. Like, I don't like the Aaron Jones pick. I'm just not high on Aaron Jones this year. Cortland okay. Sutton is my dog, but I think Jerry Judy is gonna end up having the better year. It's just like I don't think so. 
three eleven. I, I like. I'd rather have Terry than Cortland. I don't even really look at it as that. Like, oh, I lo- I'd rather have like this player over this player. I just think he like drafted well in terms of the tiers of players that were available. You know, it was like he took a good like a, a really good running back at Aaron Jones in the two four. Yeah, he could have went like Lenny or Javante or something like that. But overall, like seven. Yeah, James Cook. I don't love Comets. Whatever in Chicago, Rashad White was like the fourth running back on the team. I really like the Alec Pierce pick. Like he's getting a lot of hype out of camp, and I feel like nobody's talking about him. He could easily be the wide receiver two on this team. No, it's like right off Campbell. the bat. I'm pissed no. we didn't get Paris Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Really? Paris Campbell for you the past Paris two years. Campbell? He is the two. He's so bad. What do you mean he's, he's so he bad? You haven't injured. seen him play. Yeah, because he gets injured every year. Okay, oh, so how is he bad? Because he gets injured. That's not... Availability is the best ability. Exactly. I agree, but he's healthy he's right now. three career games. I see no difference between years. him and c It's true. We should have taken him. Yeah. Right. Paris Campbell gets in the backfield. He takes over Jonathan Taylor's spot. Okay, let's make a bet right now. I bet Paris Campbell finishes with more fantasy points than Alec Pierce. I will take that bet any day of the week. Okay, what, are we, what are we betting? Uh, Ownership of the company. Deal. That's fine. I'm that confident in it. <laughs> you take over. He's your boss now. Not happening. Deal. I quit. Stop shaking my hand. All right, I want to nice. move on to, on to Dave's team. Dave, chill as shit. His team, not so much. So he went really wide receiver heavy, and I don't actually think his wide receiver core is anything special outside of Jefferson. I mean, DK Metcalf, I'm so off of without, you know, any type of good quarterback play. Devonta Smith, I, I think, could be cool, but I'm not like – like if I if my strength is my wide receivers and Smith is my wide receiver three that I have to start, I'm not really considering that like it, that big of a strength. Mark Andrews is cool, but I also wanted to bring his team up because he drafted Travis Etienne. He also drafted James Robinson later, who we now hear might actually be back for week one. So I think that hurts – obviously, James Robinson is cool. But I think that hurts Travis Etienne. Like, I, he was a big sleeper for, I know at least you, I, I feel like you guys were both pretty yeah. in on Travis Etienne too. What do we think about him now? Because now it's like, I, I just don't think his upside is what it used to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was like the sentiment over the last few weeks that James Robinson was like getting geared up and there was a really good chance he was back early. I don't think I ever expected Etienne to be a dude who was getting 20 touches a game. I just think he's super fucking explosive and he's going to get a lot of the value touches. So I was always in on that. Three fours early, obviously 14-team league, so I'm not really sure where that even actually puts him at. There, I don't think I was ever really in on him in the third round. He had always been going like right as the fifth round clipped or the end of the fourth round, and I thought that was like a must-draft spot. But he was going three four. There's no shot I take him over like some of the guys that were going after. I'd like a lot of the, the wide receivers. Like Mike Williams, I'd probably take over ETN there. Um, you take Zeke over ETN? I, yeah, I would take Zeke over Etienne. I think as well. I don't know. I have no faith in Etienne. Really? Uh, what has he ever done to show me that I well, should he, believe he in hasn't him? Played in play, he didn't play. So well I don't game. believe in him. Let me see it first. I, I actually thought he was going to get a shit ton of work because I was not expecting James Robinson to be back until like mid. mid- we also don't know if he's going to be back. Like just because they're like he might be ready for yeah. week one without stepping foot on a single field for the games in the preseason doesn't really mean anything. It also could mean he's getting like six carries a game for three weeks, and you know. I don't, I don't fucking trust nobody out here, Tony. All right, that's fair. I actually kind of like his team because, sure, he doesn't have an RB2. Of course you like his team. Okay, I've always <laughs> been very anti-zero RB, but with the guys he has, you've got to think I like that at Jackson least Andrews one, of, a little bit. one of those guys' starters on this team, like Indianapolis, Chicago, Jacksonville, Arizona. One of those starters is going to go down with an injury, and the backup's going to take over and put up solid RB2 numbers. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I think that that's true for, like, Herbert, who could take over a full workload. And maybe Foreman, but I, I, is Foreman the number two in Carolina? Uh, I, I, I would hope more for Hines. Like if Hines gets work, if yeah. I think Hines actually has like cool Hines has his own himself, upside. Hines will be his RB two probably for a lot of the year. Yeah, but I'm what I'm or going Herbert. back to your point is I, if if Taylor gets hurt, I don't think Hines' work like increases that much to where you're like, oh, I hit the jackpot. Definitely. But it's still solid production to fill in for RB two. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. He'll be able to use him RB two. I mean, any of the start, he did a good job of grabbing backups here. I will say that. I don't know if any of them will fucking get on the field if their starters get hurt. But like Herbert's a clear guy behind Montgomery. Robinson gets a shitload of work if ETN gets hurt. Throw Williams is the number two behind Connor. Foreman is where it drops off because it's like Chuba and Foreman. It'll be a committee there in Carolina, most likely between those two if C Mac goes down. But that was, I mean, that that clearly became his strategy. He was just like, I'm just gonna go for guys where if someone gets hurt, I'm in there. Uh, I, I I think I, I like think my Jackson. biggest issue is is really his receiver core outside of Jefferson. Like I, you, you're hanging your hat on you have the best receiver core, but I don't know. I don't. Think so you do. like, does he even have the best receiver core? I don't that's what I'm does. saying. It's like I, you you also look at JJ who drafted one spot after him. His wide receiver core looks way more dead. Well, yeah, he spent higher picks. Yeah, on yeah he took three wide receivers first. Yeah, I guess so. Like, but he, he still ended up have, with he doesn't have the he tight end. Evans and DJ Moore too. Yeah. So like, not that but, I don't like. But them, you could probably like, argue that his running back core is way fucking better too. So he that's he went wide receiver. 
receiver really early, but his running backs were still awesome. And then is too. there really a, that big of a drop off from Wilson to Jackson? Actually, JJ's team is pretty fucking dynamite. That's yeah, it is. Gonna say is probably outside of Ray, probably my favorite team, probably my favorite to have a chance to win this whole thing. Yeah, I think the Isaiah McKenzie pick is one that I'm really sad that we didn't get to. I just love, I love that fucking Ty Montgomery pick. I think Ty Montgomery's at the in the four. I think he's gonna get a lot more work than people anticipate. No James White. You know it's gonna be the Ty Montgomery show for the passing downs. I think in in New England. I, I could see it. He's like the quintessential dude to piss you off in the yeah. backfield for sure. Like we we thought he was gonna maybe do it last year or whatever with the Saints or you know and he didn't. But I think this is the time Bill's gonna Bill's gonna do it. Can I bring up another? Yeah, sure. Another. I no, just, I was just gonna say tell her as your. It feels like he. Bought my draft guide, went to like the all fade <laughs> list, and then drafted everyone on the all fade list. You thought yeah, fade that, meant something else. Horrible. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about Jack Settleman. You just want she to, contend he got. You want to just talk about him? Kind of, but I, w- I want to talk about the fact that he went with Eckler, Keenan, and Herbert in the first four picks. I I know you guys like stacking, but that I, that is too much of a stack. I don't know. I don't want to put Chargers offense might be the best in the league, but the stack is fine with me. I just. At every single pick, there are players on the board that I would have rather had. Yeah. I'll take Pittman over Keenan. I would have taken JT over Eckler. Uh, Connors, whatever. Uh, Herbert, I don't really hate the pick. I just like in where he got the back players. Lead, that might be a little high for Herbert. Well, that's the 413. So that's like in, in normal leagues, that's probably like mid fifth, end of fifth. I think that's probably where he's going in one QBs, maybe. Yeah, actually, you're probably right. I'm looking the guy at the guys behind him. Too. I do really that's, like that he got Waller at the 5 2, though. That's kind of nice. That's a solid pick. Yeah. Same round as Schultz. Yeah. Herbert's my guy. I would never want to see this happen to him. But if he got hurt, Jack's team is in the gutter. That's I think fair. it's already in the gutter. Well, he, I mean, he attached his his team to the Chargers. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, like, I just I I hate that. Yeah, that's the, that's obviously the risk of stacks. You know, one of the main pieces of the stack goes down. The rest of the stack goes with it usually. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, a lot of times you can you can stack guys with like your your fifth round pick stack with your seventh round pick. I mean, this is like I said, three picks in the first four rounds. I like that Pete. Goes with C-Mac 101, and then he was probably like, oh, everyone's giving me so much shit, like I can't take another running back. He waits till the ninth round to take Kenneth Walker, hernia surgery, <laughs> takes fucking Jerick <laughs> McKinnon his running backs out of horrible. fucking practice. Yeah, his running backs are something awful. So that should be interesting to see how that plays Even out. Even the wide receivers he took, I hate. Outside of Higgins, yeah. Higgins, I I actually really like Godwin. I feel like he's going to be so good over back? the second half of the year. Yeah, I've been staying away I from like Godwin Juju. just because I feel like I don't know what, what's up. I feel up like everyone's hating on Juju. I think Juju's going to get a ton. He's going to be... Him and Kelsey are just going to be getting a ton of targets. I think most people like Juju. I think you're just li- like used to hearing me say I hate Juju Maybe. every single day. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the Juju train this year. I, he, he's a guy I'm looking to have as one of my wide receiver two or threes. I'm actually, I think something happened with his knee. Fuck his I knee. I think he's missed the last couple practices with a knee injury, though. I think like the, the five wide receivers that went after him, I'd take all of them over him, though. Not Metcalf. Not Metcalf. Amon-Ra, Michael Thomas, Amon Ra, Elijah Moore, and Ayuk. Yes. I would take the five over I would him, take too. Five. I, would I would take, take Amon Ra. Do you guys see That's Amon Ra? It. It, or you guys you guys aren't watching Hard Knocks? I haven't no. watched it. Okay. I will. I don't know if this is, like, a common thing, but he kind of had that, like, Brady mindset where he was like, I oh, can yeah, name I every single clip. receiver drafted ahead of me and where they went to college. Mm-hmm. I feel like mo- that's like I feel like maybe fantasy players can kind of do that if you're, like, really doing your research during the well, offseason. But like, I feel like... It's like eight guys, though. No, 16. dude, it was 16. Yeah. It was a low. Round, yeah. I was gonna say it was a loaded class. He started listing the guys, and I was like, "Damn!" It was like, was that? It was, I think it was the Jamar Chase year, right? Yeah, Chase, Waddle. Chase, Waddle. I can't remember everyone else, but he can. And it, it was. It started out <laughs> as a crazy fucking class, and then he started listing these guys. It's that like I'm Des like, Fitzpatrick, Des Fitzpatrick, like Tutu Atwell, and I'm like, "Holy shit! This guy, this guy was disrespected." Tutu Atwell was one of the worst. Draft picks of our generation. Everybody yeah. knew immediately he was a bust. Someone had just still to this day, I remember it was like, it was such a good tweet. It was like a Rams game and the weather report came out and it was like, yeah, wind gusts of like 25 miles an hour. And they're like, thank God, Tutu's on the IR. He would have blown over <laughs> yeah. on the field. Yeah. So that, you know, that was the, that was a sleeper bowl. So thank you to the sleeper team, obviously, for letting us run this thing and believing in us to, to host it. We had them in the office, which was pretty cool to meet the guys there. If you have not switched over to the sleeper app yet, you should do that ASAP because it's the most customizable. Um, it's the cleanest app that you're going to be able to play on. Um, and they actually innovate and they provide rules and setting updates that you're not getting on any other platform. So go check out the sleeper app. The link will be down below if you have not moved your league over to um, them. And then inside the office, we'll get some brand updates. We have been working tirelessly with people who have no idea what the fuck crypto or NFTs are to get them onboarded to the BDG3 world, which is our NFT project. Um, Minting, I believe, of this video is still live right now. 
So if you're interested in figuring out more about the project or I, the best thing to do would just be jumping into the discord and we can help you out hand to hand there. Any questions you want to know about the past, you want to know how to get into the leagues, uh, the leagues with us. You want to know anything at all. You can hop into the BDG three discord, hang out with us. Summer's wrapping up here. So we've had the mint. Your F guys obviously been live. We had the sleeper bowl in our back pocket. So now it's going to be about getting everybody that minted into their leagues. And then the draft day for the big dog bash draft is season. next Sunday, right? Yeah. Holy fuck. 10 days. That's yeah. really soon. All right. I keep thinking we're going to get a break and it's been like that since like May. And I'm just like, nope. All gas, nope. baby. All gas. No fucking breaks. Sheesh. Anything else? I don't know. It's probably, yeah, I'm a sharp. Oh, I think, uh. That's My chair is shorter than yours. I just feel like I'm looking no, up at your body. Is yeah, shorter than ours. body. I think I'm crunched up too. Bad posture, bad jeans, all of the above. You guys are so much taller. All right. Oh, sixty P looks like he's six four right now. I hope I am six four. <laughs> <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the hot dog version of our podcast. We're fucking around the table to figure out what looks best on camera. I think this was much better than the other one. So let us know as we build upon whatever bullshit we've been putting out via this. Uh, we love you. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up if you're new here, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. I'll probably see you tomorrow.